okay welcome to robotics 2 in today's class we are going to continue the discussion that we started in last class and in today's class we are going to talk about some very important concepts and they are associated with the coordinate frames now please understand the aircraft is flying there are aerodynamic forces that act on the aircraft there is some path that is prescribed for the the airplane or quadcopter that path is in inertial frame so there are these many different forces moments velocities they are in different different frames so when we try to solve the dynamics problem or control problem or try to design an autopilot we cannot add dollars to pesos so we need to be in the consistent coordinate frame and that's why we have to understand very carefully what are the fundamental coordinate frames that are used to describe the dynamics of mav and i'm going to spend some time talking about each frame and also i will try to uh, explain the relationship between the coordinate frames that we study in the context of an aircraft and the coordinate frames that we studied in robotics 1 but today's topic is super duper important so this is what we studied in last class and in robotics 1 if you rotate a coordinate frame so initial coordinate frame is x not y not and i have rotated the coordinate frame to x1 y1 what i get is i get the the rotational transformation so i get the rotation matrix and the key takeaway over here is i want you to understand that when we studied in robotics 1 we focused on the rotation matrices where the second frame and this is important and i want you to understand this is the next frame and this is the previous frame so we related next frame to the previous frame however when we are going to study the the aircrafts or uavs the sequence is reversed and what it means is going back to what we started talking about in last class i will quickly review what i said so we have an initial frame and i'm going to call this as the first frame so this is my first or zeroth frame zeroth frame and this is my first frame now what i have is i have vector that is in the first frame so i have the trans so i have frame 0 then i have frame 1 maybe i have frame 2 and so on so right now what i have is i have a vector in frame 1 and the transformation that i have here and i need to be very clear and when i say the transformation i'm about this transformation the transformation that i have here allows me to transfer the vector in the uh, frame 1 to vec in the frame 0 so think about it like this and i want you to spend a minute looking at this problem so my vector is 5 i1 but what i want to do is i want to express that vector in i0 coordinate so what i did i used the transformation that related the first frame to zeroth frame and please note 
the rotation transformation matrix got transposed because it's an orthogonal orthonormal matrix so a key issue here is and i need to make sure that you understand key issue here is this in robotics 1 in robotics 1 what we did say we had a, a revolute joint then we had another revolute joint and then we had maybe a prismatic joint and so on so this is the first revolute joint so you are going to have the zeroth frame over here and what we did is we said this is my z1 and then i said uh this is my x1 uh x0 and this is my y0 this is the right hand coordinate system so if you recollect the rotation transformation that we always used the rotation transformation that we always used was cosine theta minus sin theta sin theta cosine theta 0 0 0 0 1 0 and the argument there was we are always looking at projection of x1 y1 z1 on x0 y0 z0 so this is the projection off and this is projection on so now what does it mean in terms of vectors so i want you to think about the vectors so this is my i not this is my g not this is my k not so what this rotation matrix is telling me and this is super important that i have i not j not k not here i have this rotation matrix cosine theta minus sin theta 0 sin theta cosine theta 0 0 0 1 and i have this vector which is i1 j1 k1 here so please note this goes over here and this goes over here if you were to expand this what do you get you get the relationship something like i not is equal to cosine theta i1 minus sin theta j1 plus 0 k1 you get not is equal to sin theta i1 plus cosine theta j1 plus 0 k1 and finally you get k not is equal to 1 so so what does it mean it means if i give you a vector which is please note it is 5 i not plus 3 j not so i have a vector which is described as 5 i not and 3 j not and i ask you to express this vector so here is the question express this vector in i1 j1 k1 what you would do is you will take this value substitute over here you will take this value you substitute over here and finally you are going to have an expression in i1 and you will have an expression in j1 so what i am doing is i am from inertial frame 
or initial frame to the next frame and that's what we did lot of times in robotics 1 but in robotics 2 the idea is we are going to go from the next frame to initial frame what that means i am really interested in something like this i1 j1 k1 is equal to a matrix i0 j0 this is what i want to do and some of you may ask me why is this necessary so i give you an explanation consider that you have a plane and in due course of time we will talk about why why do the planes fly and all that stuff and the assumption that i am going to make since the airplane or the aircraft is much much smaller than the earth i'm making assumption flat earth assumption and this is my mav i'm going to assume that for practical purposes the earth is flat which is actually not i'm going to assume this assumption is valid because the aircraft is not flying at very high altitudes or at high speeds or is not going intercontinental so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set up my base coordinate frame somewhere over here and this base coordinate frame is in in the standards of uavs so it's usually north east and down frame so this is north is east and this is down so i'm going to write this over here so you are going to have north which is usually x east which is usually y and down which is usually z and they are perpendicular to each other so the it's it's called as earth fix so earth fixed earth center so assume that this initial frame is at the center of this flat earth and it is fixed it's not changing now if you want to define the path of the aircraft you want aircraft to go from say point a you want aircraft to go to point b clearly this path will be defined in terms of this inertial flat earth earth fixed earth centered frame and that is what gps provides you so if you have a gps the velocities that you are computed by gps is given in in terms of earth fixed earth centered however if you think about this aircraft this aircraft is pitching this aircraft is rolling and this aircraft is yawing so in other words the body frame of this aircraft is not aligned in any ways with the earth fixed earth centered frame so and there is additional complexity here so if you think of the air stream that is coming and that air is actually giving the lift to the aircraft it's not aligned to the direction in which the aircraft is traveling so in other words that aircraft may be going in direction some direction but the air flow is not in the same direction because there is some wind speed or wind load so because we have so much complex aerodynamical effects taking place in the body frame but our path is in the inertial frame but our control they are in the local frame of the air frame 
So basically, you want aircraft to roll, pitch, and yaw so that it can travel the correct path. That is local to the aircraft. That's why we have these bunch of frames going on. So just to be super consistent, we have to make sure that we express all the velocities and all the forces, all the equations of motion in a consistent frame. That problem is not so severe in the case of ground vehicles. For an example, if you are flying or if you are driving a car, your car does not roll. If car rolls, that means uh, you are in accident. That car may yaw, but it does not leave the surface of the earth. It doesn't pitch. That way, the the UGVs or for that matter, robot on dynamics. It's considerably simple compared to the aircraft dynamics because you have forces that are acting in different frames. Your controls, controls, and autopilot they are acting in different frames. That's why it is super important that we clearly understand what is going on with the coordinate frames. So please understand the point of discussion here is in robotics one. we used this formulation in robotics 2 we are going to use this formulation and with that i'm going to rewrite i'm going to rewrite the equations again so Okay, uh, Zubir has a question, and let me finish the discussion. What I'm trying to say here, and uh, then it will be clear. And and bear with me because I'm trying to relate the concepts that we discussed in robotics one with the concepts uh, in robotics two. So let me let me start with something like this. So you have. x y z so this is x not this is y not this is z not and what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a positive rotation theta about x not that will cause these two vectors to go something like this the rotation transformation matrix for this guy is cosine theta minus sine theta 0 sine theta cosine theta 0 0 0 1 and what this means is if you have a vector expressed in i coordinate system so i'm going to call this x1 y1 z1 i not j not this is i1 j1 now this gives me a way to go from and i'm going to write this clearly over here i'm going to call this vector x not y not z not x not y not z not uh to r x1 y1 z1 however if i want to go in the reverse way so if i want to go x1 y1 z1 i will have to use r inverse 
multiplied by x0 y0 z0 which is also written as r transpose x0 y0 z0 x1 y1 z1 now i want to take second case where so this is the rotation about z rotation about z now now i'm going to take another case when the rotation is about and bear with me because this is the material that we studied earlier but this is still super important so if you have a rotation about y not this becomes this is theta this is theta so this is z1 x1 y1 and again now i'm going to relate it something like this x y0 z0 is equal to just for the sake of clarity i will just call this z theta z theta z theta z and this is about z is equal to and we derive this cosine theta 0 sin theta 0 1 0 sin theta 0 cosine theta and you have a negative sign here x1 y1 z1 this is the rotation about y not now if you want to go the other way which is x1 y1 z1 and if there is any confusion about the directions or the rotational transformation i would encourage you to watch the video lecture from robotics 1 where we spent lot of time on deriving this transformation and then we proceeded to homogeneous transformation now but in this case i need to give you this explicit expression x1 y1 z1 and the reason for that is because i have seen students and as a matter of fact i myself have made mistakes in the simulation then i did not use the correct coordinate transformations and that becomes a little tricky when you are dealing with a north east down coordinate system that may not be very intuitive as the coordinate system that we discussed earlier so this becomes 0 1 0 sin theta 0 cosine theta now the last case that i need to discuss is if i have the rotation about x axis so for an example so now i have a rotation about x axis so i'm going to call this theta x and please note oh i made a mistake this needs to be the right handed rotation so which means curl your fingers in the direction uh, of uh, the arrow and then your fingers should should point out uh, in the direction of revolutions so if you curl your fingers this is the thumb and this is the direction of rotation so curl your fingers and you have just to be consistent you have direction of rotation something like this so always positive rotation and why this is important is uh, when we look at the lift and drag on the aircraft uh, we will have to look at 
something called as angle of attack uh the convention is to take the negative of angle of attack so that the the dynamics is in the consistent coordinate frame and i made that mistake while solving the problems so so if you have it like this then you have a a coordinate frame which is something like this this is x 0 y 0 c 0 you have x1 y1 z1 and this is theta x and the rotation matrix which is uh, i'm going to relate x0 y0 z0 is equal to x1 y1 z1 that that rotation matrix is given as since the rotation is about x becomes 1 0 0 0, 0 cosine theta minus sine theta 0 sine theta cosine theta but this is r uh theta x and there is a, a convention that i want you to be familiar with and this is the convention that is used in the textbook so in the textbook the convention that is used is something like this where this rotation matrix this is the previous frame this is the next frame and the convention that we use in robotics 1 is something like this but the textbook uses the convention that is shown over here so what this means is if i want to go x1 y1 z1 this is going to be r01 transpose x0 y0 Z zero, and that means this is R one zero. In our robotics one, we used the rotation transformation matrix, something like this: x one, y y one, z one. And then here. here i have x0 y0 z0 and again i want to be very clear x1 y1 z1 is equal to 1 0 0 0 cosine theta sin theta you just transpose it 0 sin theta cosin theta x 0 y 0 z now these are the important rotation matrices and i want you to focus on this formulation here i want you to focus on uh x1 i want you to focus on the relation here and i want you to focus on this formulation here so this is what we will use when we study the dynamics what it means is now look at the right handed rotation about j axis this is what is discussed in the textbook so right handed rotation about j axis which is the rotation about y not and this is the same rotation matrix that we obtained uh in the rotation about uh y not so i guess yeah rotation about 
this is about z not this is about x not and then there is y not so that is what it is if you look at the rotation about x not axis and this is the rotation about x not axis but please understand this sign is telling me that i have x1 y1 z1 is equal to r 10 x0 y0 z0 so i want you to be very comfortable and very clear with the sign convention that is shown over here and these are the properties of the orthonormal matrices that we used for transferring from one frame to other frame now before i go to the next slide i just want to make sure uh, you understood uh, the material that we talked about here so rotational transformations rotation matrices then different frames and transformations you should be absolutely comfortable with one thing i want to comment is the rotation matrix as you probably know they are non commutative so which means if you have r theta x r theta z r theta y which is not equal to r theta z r theta x and r theta y so but one thing that we made use of is small rotations small rotations can be approximated to be commutative however if you look at the the robot joint you will see that robot angular variation is through a very small angle especially when the robot is moving slowly but large rotations that are very common in the aircrafts you cannot use uh, a different interpretation of the angles so you have to be in the consistent frame and you have to make sure that you use the consistent angles now here is sort of an alternate explanation and hopefully this will uh, answer zubir's question wherein if we are causing rotation from one angle to other angle so you have the rotation wherein what you have is you have the vector q and you have the vector p so what the relationship between p and q is expressed in terms of this rotation matrix and this same discussion that we had earlier but here it's actually derived so you can go through this expression and we derived something similar in the robotics one so once you go through this derivation it should convince you that the rotation matrices that we have derived are accurate two concepts that you should be comfortable with is one is the question of passive rotation in the case of passive rotation the point is stationary and the coordinate frame rotates so what i'm trying to say here is this so think about that you have a coordinate frame x not y not this is the point this point is a and what i want to do is i am rotating my reference frame but the point is staying where it is so point a has not moved but my rotation frame has moved 
through angle theta that is passive rotation in the case of active rotation just opposite happens so my coordinate frame is remaining the same x not y not and to express the rotation so initially i have a point over here so this is the vector and now it has rotated to different angle so a has gone to a prime so this is active rotation which means point a has traveled and the whole vector has rotated now the thing is uh, depend on how you look at the kinematics uh, there is a uniform interpretation and that we will look at once we become more familiar with these transformation but as we go through the material i will be clear in discussing what type of transformation it is what type of rotation it is and how the frames are related so next part once again is super duper important so first and foremost it's called the inertial frame inertial frame inertia means laziness so which means this frame is fixed now you may ask me fixed where so this is earth centered earth fixed e c e f earth center earth fixed this frame in the context of mavs we are going to assume the flat earth and our north is always be represented something like this east and our down is always going to be down the flat plane so my coordinate frame is going to be north east and down so north vector is usually consider x east vector is consider y down vector is considered z this again is a right hand coordinate system right hand coordinate system and the unit vectors are i not or in the if i were to use the convention in the book it's i i j i k i i indicating its inertial and please note this is fixed this does not move aircraft may move aircraft may go wherever it wants but the earth centered earth fixed frame is not going to move and if you have a gps satellite over here is going to transmit the gps signal but now here is the funny part that satellite is also moving and the satellite is also changing orientation so the information that is going to send about the position orientation etc it cannot send that information in its satellite's own coordinate system that information is going to come in ecef coordinate frame so the gps signal that that is going to get transmitted the or the inertial velocities the velocities that are expressed in inertial velocities uh in inertial frame are called inertial velocities are always earth fixed earth centered frames and this is also called as ned frame north east down before i go any further is everyone clear about north east down earth centered earth fixed inertial frame the next frame is going to be in the same orientation please note the orientation is not going to change for an example if i have the earth fixed earth centered frame which is like this i am not going to change the the angles but i am going to tra translate this frame so for an example initially the frame was here i translated that frame over here and i am going to attach this frame to the center of gravity of the airplane 
and I want to be very clear. The airplane may be like this. The airplane may be like this. Or the quadcopter may be in some other orientation. But what I'm interested in doing is I'm interested in locating the CG. And that's a point. CG of the aircraft or a quadcopter and translate. So this is purely translated frame. There is no, no rotation. There is pure translation between the inertial frame to the vehicle frame. So this is translation only. No rotation. So you have an earth fixed, earth centered inertial frame. And now you have vehicle fixed, vehicle centered vehicle frame. So inertial frame is fixed to earth, that to flat earth, vehicle frame is fixed to the vehicle, but it's not changing the orientation. So which means I can describe the, uh, the these two frames by just providing the pure translation vectors. So I can provide uh, the distances and say uh, it's five I naught, seven J naught, uh, minus three K naught. And I know where the center of gravity of the vehicle is. However, but please try to understand the vehicle itself may be oriented in some weird three-dimensional fashion. So now what we are going to study is we are going to study the orientations of the vehicle itself, the orientation of the aircraft itself. But the key takeaway here is that these frames, the vehicle fixed uh, frame is generated just by pure translation. There is no rotation, but the aircraft orientation could be anywhere. The next concept is now what we want to do is, we have our aircraft and we have our earth center, earth fixed inertial frame. And then what we have is we have our north is down frame, but our aircraft is for the time being, so just imagine, it's going something like this. So aircraft is pointed in some three dimensional orientation uh, around the vehicle frame. So how do we transfer this vehicle frame to the actual orientation of the aircraft? And that is done by three angles. One is yaw, the second one is pitch, and third one is bank or roll. So what does that mean? Is let me show you a simple picture of the aircraft. And I'm not going to assign the coordinate frames yet. But what I want to tell you is the orientation, the, the rotation of the vehicle this is basically yaw. So heading is yaw. So the orientation that changes the steering or the orientation of the, the nose is called as yaw. Next thing is you have the axis coming through the, the wing. And I will show you. So for an example, if you have an axis that is coming out like this, please note, this is perpendicular. This angle is pitch. So aircraft is pitching. And the last one is roll. So these are three important angles. 
so if you look from side view so this is the aircraft nose is pointing towards us and tail is behind so this is actually road if you have the aircraft that is going up that is actually pitch and if you have the aircraft that is yawing so i'm going to show you the top view this is the tail this is actually yaw so there are these three angles and these are called euler angles and please note there are 12 combinations of euler angles and depending upon uh, what aircraft design textbook you use uh, they use different angles but in this class sequence is going to be yaw uh, pitch and roll so we will talk about uh, these sequence of operation one word of caution is these euler angles they become singular so at certain orientation which is called as gimbal lock these euler angles cannot uniquely identify the position so imagine the case that the aircraft is pitching through 90 degrees so what i want you to do is i want you to think about uh, this thought exercise this is the air and at this point we know the yaw is about this axis so we know that yaw is about this axis now i want you to visualize that this aircraft is pitching still believe it or not this is actually is going to be my yaw axis now imagine the case that for some reason this aircraft becomes perpendicular this is like this now what has happened the roll is actually defined around this but in this particular case please note my yaw axis was this now my roll axis also coincided with the yaw axis so at 90 degree pitch 90 degree pitch i lost 1 degree of freedom so at 90 degree pitch my roll axis and my yaw axis they coincided they become one and the same so that is what is called as gimbal lock and if you want to avoid gimbal lock you use something called as quaternion and the discussion on the quaternion is in the textbook uh, they are used for designing missiles guidance guidance system or uh, fighter planes where you have a complex 90 degree pitch maneuvers now what i'm going to do is i'm going to talk about so just a quick recap where we were we were on the in the vehicle frame so what we had is we had this vehicle and we had a frame that was fixed at cg but that was aligned with north east down frame so and that north east down frame was the inertial frame so this is north east down this is north east down now what i want to do is i want to find out the coordinate frame that kind of is aligned to the the direction where the vehicle is pointing so what i want to do is this is my vehicle frame and this vehicle frame is indicated by iv and rjv and please note iv aligns with kv1 so kv aligns so kv 
aligns with k v1 so this is the vehicle frame and i'm going to call this vehicle 1 frame and vehicle frame and the vehicle frame is basically uh to answer eric's question if you if you think it through you will realize that even if you fix roll axis the roll actually coincides with yaw so you can uh, just go through that thought exercise and you will realize if you were to fix the roll axis and have that aircraft go through 90 degree pitch then you will notice that if you yaw in the 90 degree pitch direction is actually around the roll axis i can answer the question maybe after the class if there is still doubt okay going back to what we have here is so i have a frame that is attached to the center but now i have an orientation this is the rotation or the heading orientation which is yaw so this is yaw and the relationship and i have to be super clear this is v1 this is v so this is vehicle 1 and this is vehicle so the rotation so if you have a vector that is expressed in vehicle 1 frame and if you if that needs to be expressed by a vector which is in the vehicle vehicle frame you have this rotation matrix and please note this is the same rotation matrix please note rotation is about z and i want you to go back to what we discussed this rotation matrix is similar to the rotation matrix that we have discussed uh in our earlier discussion so this this is that rotation matrix now so what we did is we found a rotation matrix that relates the the vehicle frame with the vehicle one frame what means what it means that if i have a vector that is represented in vehicle one frame i have to use this rotation matrix to convert that into the vehicle frame before i proceed further any question in vehicle one frame so i have to be again very clear if you have a rotation matrix v1 to v what that means is you have this vector pv1 is equal to r v1 v p v because i don't know underscore uh, the way you have written this is what it means and just in robotics one this is the sign convention used so okay so moving we are we have discussed vehicle one frame that allowed us to go from the vehicle frame that was fixed to cg to the frame that is oriented in the direction of the nose now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add the pitch angle so now think about the way the vehicle pitching so vehicle is pitching through angle theta which means the vehicle one frame please note 
vehicle one frame gets oriented in the vehicle two frame. This is vehicle two frame. This is vehicle one frame. So now vehicle one frame and vehicle two frame are related with this rotational matrix. And note, this rotation is about Y. This is rotation, rotation about Y. And that's why I want to go back and show you uh, here real quick. This is the rotation about Y. So if you look at the rotation about Y, the expression that I have, the rotation for the pitch is nothing but the same rotation that I have over here. So be very careful with the rotations what you use. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about is the rotation from vehicle two frame to something called as the body frame, which means now we are going to allow the vehicle to roll. And this, ro once the vehicle rolls, the rotation is, so we are going from, going from, and we are going to. So we are going from vehicle two frame to the body frame. And once we are in the body frame, essentially what has happened? So we had earth centered, earth fixed frame. Then we translated, this is translation. We translated that to the, the vehicle frame. Frame. Then we added the yaw angle that goes to vehicle one frame. Then we added the pitch angle that took us to vehicle two frame. And then we added the roll angle that took us to the body frame. So Okay, we will talk about it. Uh, what we need to understand at this point is this sequence is super important. And when all the books, I mean, all the, the problems that we are going to solve, that we are going to use this sequence. And the idea is, yes, we are going to change one Euler angle at a time. We are not going to change yaw and pitch simultaneously. It may be changing simultaneously, but as we run the simulation or as we work out the problems, first we will change the yaw, then we will change the pitch, and then we will change the rule. So this is the sequence that we are going to follow. And the reason for that is because the Euler angles, the rotation matrices are not commutative. The next part is the conversion of inertial frame to body frame. And why is this required? Uh, the, requir the requirement is, say you have some inertial velocities. So you get GPS signal and you get GPS velocities. Those are in inertial frame but those velocities need to be expressed in the frame of the airplane. So we know that the aircraft is traveling uh, maybe five units in north, five units in east and minus 10 down direction in the earth fixed earth centered frame. However, if I want to know actually what is the body velocity, what is the actual velocity of the vehicle then I need to use this rotational transformation so that I know what is the actual velocity of the airplane. 
So if I want to find out the velocity of the airplane in its own coordinate frame or its own body coordinate frame, then I need to use this rotation. And I want you to see how these rotations are occurring. So first, please note, the vehicle frame and the inertial frame, they are aligned at, in the same orientation, which means basically the, the inertial frame and the body frame, there is no change in the orientation. So if this is earth fixed down, so here you're gonna have the same uh, 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 NED frame. So you are in the vehicle frame. This is, so to go from the vehicle frame to the vehicle one frame, you use this transformation. To go from vehicle frame to vehicle two frame, you use this transformation. To go from vehicle two frame to body frame, you use this transformation. In other words, you first perform your orientation change, then perform the pitch orientation change, and then perform the roll orientation change. That way, now you have your velocities or positions in the body frame. And that is what is needed when we are trying to solve the problem. This is again the same problem when you are trying to solve a flight dynamics um, or inertial navigation. So keep this in mind. This is the same problem that is used for inertial navigation. And when you are trying to combine IMU plus say a stationary reference such as GPS. Yeah, so this is uh, something similar to uh, what we studied in um, one. So I just want to give you the, the context of robotics one. The only thing is the convention used here is slightly different. So this is what we did. That gives me This is something what we did. And uh, with this, the next two frames are important that we are going to use the stability frame and wind frame. And before I discuss stability frame and wind frame, I would encourage you to spend some time with the material in the textbook to, to make yourself comfortable with the roll pitch yaw orientation change. Now, here is something uh, that is you may want to be very uh, careful about. Is when you are going to solve project one, the coordinate system that you use, it has to be consistent. What, what coordinate system you use is totally up to you but the coordinate system has to be consistent. Okay, now I need, to, I need to go to MATLAB. So if you have MATLAB, please uh, start MATLAB. And I'm gonna show you the satellite problem and the, the files for the satellite problems are show, actually in the, the canvas. So if you go to canvas, you should be seeing MATLAB codes. So right now I want you to open spacecraft MATLAB RAR, spacecraft to MATLAB RAR and spacecraft Simulink RAR. Spacecraft MATLAB RAR spacecraft to MATLAB RAR and spacecraft Simulink RAR. And we are going to use these files to run simulation. 
Now at this point, I want to make sure that you have MATLAB opened up. And you should be able to see my screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the, the, the discussion. So first and foremost is I want you to open the function X, Y, Z is equal to rotate X, Y, Z, C, theta, psi. Now I want you to see that I have hard coded the roll pitch and your rotation matrices here. So this is my roll rotation matrix. This is my pitch rotation matrix. And this is my yaw rotation matrix. And so can you see my MATLAB screen? Okay. Okay. Now I want you to just look at the line number 15. This line number 15 is nothing but multiplication of your rotation matrix multiplied by the pitch rotation matrix multiplied by the roll rotation matrix. So this is nothing but the same implementation that will take my vector from the vehicle frame to the body frame. Everyone understood this? This rotation is going to take the vector from the vehicle frame to the body frame. Now what I want you to do is, I want you to look at the second function, which is translate. Now this translate is nothing but a, a translation. And this translation is nothing but the relationship between the earth centered earth fixed frame. That's why I have PN, PE and PD. So position in the north coordinate, position in the east coordinate, and position in the down coordinate. And what I'm doing is I'm just using pure translation to relate to the displacement in the initial frame to the displacement in the new frame. So translation or translate function gives me the relationship between the earth centered earth fixed frame to vehicle frame. And the rotation takes me from the vehicle frame to the body frame. Everyone understood this? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this spacecraft and all this information, all this information, yes, vehicle to body gives me the in the rotate matrix. So this matrix is going to give me vehicle to body because please note it only consists of orientation translation is going to take me from the ecef is uh, the earth center earth fix to the vehicle frame after vehicle frame there is vehicle one frame after vehicle one frame there is vehicle two frame and after vehicle two frame there is body frame now next thing is i want to draw the spacecraft body. So how do I do this spacecraft body? So, and again, I will explain this function step by step. The spacecraft body is a three dimensional plot. So I'm going to plot in 3D using this function plot three. And I'm going to supply the array of X, Y, Z values X, Y, Z values, X, Y, Z values. And 
the way there is something else and i want you to be very very careful here the vehicle the spacecraft is drawn in its own coordinate frame the spacecraft is drawn in its own coordinate frame but the displacements are given in the uh, uh, in the north east down so there is this rotation matrix that maps the vehicle frame which is used for drawing only for drawing not nothing anything else just to draw the vehicle we are going to use because those are the points described on the vehicle those points are not in terms of north east down so we have to transfer the 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 drawing frame to the north east down and that's again just a fixed rotation and some of you who took my robotics 1 class will notice this is nothing but the projection matrix that we used in robotics 1 all the time this r is nothing but the projection matrix that we used to align the coordinate frames next thing is the spacecraft points now here are the spacecraft points they come directly from the textbook so the way the spacecraft is drawn is you have point number 1 this is the x location of point 1 y location of point 1 c location of point 1 you have point 2 x location y location z location x location y location z location and this spacecraft is defined with 13 points so i created this huge array of numbers it's actually a matrix that that gives me the location of each and every point on the spacecraft now what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly use this function draw spacecraft i'm going to copy uh i'm going to paste it over here and i'm going to change let's do this for just for a second i'm going to say this is going to be 1 1 1 i will say my phi is 0 theta is 0 psi is 0 no handle please note handle is a pointer so i'm going to specify an empty pointer and i'm going to say my mode is none run and once i do this you should have a spacecraft drawn and your spacecraft should look something like this now what i'm going to do is i'm really quick i'm going to enter this command the chat window so you have it the last part is i'm going to make it do continuous rotations and to that to do that i want you to go back to your matlab screen and do the function run the function run me first the idea is in this run me first function i'm sequentially changing the values of the angles and when you run this code you will have a simulation or animation of the spacecraft rotating are you able to see your spacecraft rotating Oh, John. Well, you haven't seen anything. Wait, just wait for a second. So your air instead of this spacecraft, what you should do is you should have your airplane, and your airplane should be able to do what this spacecraft is doing. But. just just hold on a second and i will discuss this in next class but i would still want you to run or try this code i want you to look at spacecraft simulink folder 
new share and i'm running 2 minutes late but let me show this to you because that will give you enough information go to spacecraft underscore simulink and there is an simulink file the simulink file is mavsim chapter 2 slx run this mavsim chapter 2 slx and when you do mavsim chapter 2 slx this interpreted matlab function is the same function that is drawing the spacecraft say run and boom this is what you get and you can click on those pointers and you are going to get slider bars so you can actually that translate the spacecraft wherever you want to you can rotate the spacecraft where you want to and what i want you to see in project 1 is instead of this spacecraft you would have your aircraft and you should be able to move the pointer and i will show you just for a second where the pointers are the pointers so you click here double click here that will open up the slider window and then basically slide that will change the roll pitch and your orientation and with that you should be able to do your orientation and all the dimensions for the aircraft are given to you and that's it for today i am going to stop here and i will stop recording.